listening to Character Crusade. Welcome, Crusaders, to Character Crusade Podcast. This is episode number 51, and I am Stu. And I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And we are broadcasting live from GlitchCon 2017 in beautiful Minneapolis, Minnesota. Absolutely. Yes, we are very excited because today we have a Mr. Caleb Merrick with us. Uh, We are big fans of his YouTube channel. He's a great lover of games and a creator of games and... Uh, Actually, somebody who has participated a lot more than we have, I think. I think so. In the game development community. Bow down to artist Caleb. Yes, exactly. Uh, Welcome, Caleb. Hello. Thank you. (laughs) It's good to have you on the show. I mean, we uh, have been following your YouTube channel for a very long time. And so getting you on the show, I think, was a priority. But when this opportunity came along, it seemed like the perfect venue to have Caleb Merrick on the show. So we are going to get into a little bit more about you and what you do. But before we do that, I just want to give people a rundown on what Character Crusade even is. Yep. I think it, there has been an evolution. We started this podcast a couple of years ago, and when it started out, it was really focused on open world games, specifically games like Skyrim, and coming up with tools and techniques that are pulled from things like uh, screenwriting, for example. Uh, or character development that you might find in tabletop role-playing games to help enhance the role-playing process, to help enhance the experience and really allow you to squeeze the most um, the most fun and enjoyment out of games like Skyrim and Fallout and some of these other open-world games that we all know and love, like Mass Effect, stuff like that. And so over the years, we've kind of developed a lot of techniques and we've built a community around this concept of how can we make games more enjoyable how can we make them more immersive how can we how can we create our own stories around these experiences and over time what we've discovered is that a community has popped up and the podcast and the associated uh, YouTube channels have kind of evolved into something that is uh, turned into kind of a really creation or creative focused community where we've got a lot of people who are doing fan fiction and writing their own stories and they are creating videos and they're doing things now that they didn't do when we started this and Mm -hmm. a lot of it is inspired by some of the things we've been talking about and uh, we love to interact with those people in the community so it's gone from being kind of a discussion of open world games to being more of a discussion about how do these inspire us to create and how can we use them as frameworks to tell stories in new ways absolutely so we have kind of dubbed this new media storytelling it's a way that you can get your story out of your head and out there for other people to enjoy without having to write a book which can be drudgery yeah and (laughs) using the games that you enjoy to play Yep. Exactly, exactly. So that's where we're at today. Um, we're constantly evolving, and coming up here in the near future, we are going to be diversifying quite a bit, playing some new games, doing some more live streaming, and talking about those games and how some of the things that we've established over the last two years in terms of techniques uh, and so forth can apply to games other than strictly open world games. Right. So we're very excited about that and looking forward to getting into some of that new content. All right. So. 
without further ado, let's talk to Caleb. Uh, Caleb, uh, you and I have spoken several times online, on the phone, and uh, as I've gotten to know you, um, one of the things that is sort of a standout thing to me is just how much not only you enjoy games, but appreciate the aesthetic and the amount of work that goes into games, and so much of the experience that I've had watching all the hundreds of videos on your channel uh, has been kind of appreciating you appreciating games from the perspective of someone who knows how to create them and someone who's an artist. Um, maybe we could start out with you just kind of giving us a little bit of a backstory on how you, you got into uh, the art side of things and what your experience was, your first experience uh, with video games, what inspired you to start creating your own as an independent developer? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, well, that was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> my dad um, is a nationally published artist and uh, mm -hmm. years and years ago when I was just a tiny little tyke, uh, he he broke his back and he became paralyzed from the waist down. Oh. Um, he lifted too much sheetrock over his head. And, wow. and yeah, the doctor said he'd never walk again. And um, somehow it's just, just a miracle. He's, he's up and walking around and he'll never run again and everything like that. But he, he was forced to do something um, to help the family out, you know? So he, he remembered, you know, from way back when he was a kid and in his hippie days and stuff like that, he could, you know, he was, he was an artist, you know, he could actually, he could draw. Uh -huh. And uh, so he started, uh, he started doing art. And his art career from there, it just snowballed, it just took off. And uh, over time, he, uh, you know, then he, he got nationally published, you know, he had these uh, beautiful studios. He currently has one of the most beautiful studios in Colorado I've, I've ever seen. Wow. And um, so when I was a kid, he never, he never, you know, forced me into the art. You know, he never said, "This is what I do, th therefore you should do it." Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, I, I saw him doing it, and, and I myself, you know, I had, uh, I had the talent. It's like one of the few things on the planet that I can do. I'm not saying I'm the best <laughs> at it, but, you know, yeah. as I, as I mentioned one time to you, you know, that, that, the, the right side of my brain is, is, de is nicely developed there. And the left side of my brain shriveled up like a, you know, like a little, you know, grape or something like that, like a prune. It's just, you know, yeah. so it's like all I can do. And, uh -huh. um, you know, I mean, I, you know, it's like, you know, doing horrible in school when I was a kid. But dang, that kid can draw. Have you seen him? That kid can really draw. He's a he's a moron, but he can draw like like no tomorrow. You know? Yeah. He's so got skills. <laughs> that it sounds so interestingly familiar. Actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's kind of you know so the art started there, um, and uh, um, and then I got into it professionally when I was 15. Um, I started I, I uh, somehow got into uh, an, an all uh, it, it was it was an adult thing. It was you know it was it wasn't for kids. It was a an art competition. It was taking place at the uh, at the art at, at an art museum there in Colorado, and I took best of show. And, and a doctor purchased the, the, the little drawing. So that was when I was uh, r right at 15, like when I'd right, uh, just about turned 15. And then from there, I just started doing the artwork. Okay. And um, yeah. Well, that's... And so... Well, one oh, of the sorry. things that you had mentioned to me is that um, your dad kind of placed some restrictions on what he was going to teach you initially, right? Didn't let you, didn't want you to get into certain areas of art until you'd mastered others? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, as a matter of a fact, uh, I remember when I told him, "Okay, I, I really want to do this. I want to learn how to how to how to do what you do." Mm -hmm. And he said, "Great, come on up to the studio. You know, whenever you want, come on up and and we'll get started." And I said, "All right." You know, so the next day I went up to his studio. He had this beautiful old bank building downtown, um, the upper story of a of an 1870s bank building, mm -hmm. and um, which sounds I went awesome. up there. Oh, it, it was it's it was so cool. It was amazing. And I went up there, and uh, he handed me uh, a pencil and a piece of paper, and he just said, "Get cracking," and that was it. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. I've had so I thought, to okay, well, so you know, it's, I didn't know any technique or anything like that, and I just so I started. But that's when all the the uh, the critiques came. So it was nothing but solid critiques from there, and he, and he didn't allow me to do 
color. He didn't allow me to go anywhere near color uh, for years, not until I had mastered black and white, because the values are what, what that's the most important thing in art, right. really, if you think about it, especially in realism. Sure. You know, as long as you get your, your light values correct, it, does, it almost doesn't matter what color, you know, that, that, you, that you add to it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's all about light, you know, and, and how light interacts with objects. So right. that was the importance of that. And that really helped because I'm, I'm colorblind. You see, I've got a red-green colorblindness. So, okay. Um, that, that helped me to... Fascinating. <laughs> that yeah. blows me away. I can't believe I've seen, that. I've seen but, your work. I can't even... I cannot yeah. fathom that. That's crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I do have to ask. I do, I do have to ask, though. Sometimes I've got to ask people, you know, is, is, this, is this a good color for this tree or this bush? And, and really? people are, you know, and yeah, yeah sometimes it's like, hmm, it's looking especially lime. So you might want to... <laughs> that is okay. amazing. You know, I actually yeah. used to work with a guy when I was painting who was colorblind. Yeah. And he got sent on a job to go do a little patch, a little repair. Oh and, no! Uh, it was like a gray. It was on a oh, floor, oh. and and he's like, "Oh, it looked just perfect. It could blend it in. You couldn't ever tell. It was completely the wrong color." <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, no idea. Yeah. But the values can, were right. So. But no, values, yeah, yes. that's exactly right. I Speaking mean, to your point on value. Well, here's something that's kind of ironic. Uh, <laughs> later on, this is this is years later. Um, I had gotten back from uh, living and working in Australia, and I just needed a job, some kind of job. So, how did, how did you get to I went Australia? And I worked at Home Depot. And, <laughs> when, did, um, when did you go to Australia? Uh, we opened in this up story. a really big Home Depot. Uh, this was in Tucson, Arizona, yeah. and I remember when I was getting the job, um, I was talking to the uh, uh, whoever was you know, the HR person was at the time, and, and um, they were looking at my resume, and it's all filled with art, art, art. I'd always done yeah. art. And they said, oh, my goodness, we've got the perfect spot for you. I guess You're going to go into the paint department. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and right then and there, the first thing that came to my brain was, you're going to have a lot of angry customers. Yeah. But, <laughs> Get color and, matching. Uh, nice. <laughs> I didn't say a word because I needed the job. But I'll tell you what. Yeah. yeah. We had a lot of interesting reactions from contractors and all that kind of stuff. Really? Were you pointing oh, people yeah. to the grays? <laughs> and, and, and you know, the contractors, that they don't want funny. just a gallon. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. They deal in yeah. like 20, 30, 40 gallon batches. Yeah. 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 So. They're like, Caleb, this house is especially lime. <laughs> it's it's especially it. lime. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Well, that's pretty yep. amazing. I, you know, it talk about dealing with some adversity there. I mean, you, obviously, you have to have a certain amount of trust uh, in in people where your art is concerned, right? No, that is true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God, that's crazy. Definitely. Now, so, your father did did he have any like did he have any formal uh, artistic training or anything like that, or was he completely self taught? Or no, as a matter of a fact. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just, he's just self-taught, um, and, and it's kind of strange because uh, myself, uh, my, my father, my mother, and my sister are all uh, profoundly, uh, uh, and I'm, okay, like I, I want to be careful about the kind of words I use for myself <laughs> because, you know, I'd, I don't want to, you know, look like a, a jerk or anything like that, hyping myself up, but they, they are, they're so good. They're so amazing. And mm -hmm. so we're kind of like the flying Wallendas in that, you know, in that, in that area. <laughs> just we're family all just kind of artistic talent. Everybody has got some. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right. And gold LeMay right. body suits. <laughs> nice. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, I never knew. <laughs> well, that's, that is so cool. I mean, I, I definitely wanted to make sure that we spent some time talking to you about your background as far as artistry is concerned, because I, I think that sort of, you know, ultimately forms who a person becomes as an artist. But also yeah. part of that, I think, part of the creative process for you seems like it revolved around a lot of time spent on self-discovery in, in other areas besides just art. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, one of the things that was pretty clear to me after we had spoken for a while is that uh, you, you've probably packed more life experience uh, in than, than a lot of people twice your age. Um, 
or three times your age. Yeah, possibly, possibly <laughs> even that, I, I would think. Uh, what, what kind of inspired that? I mean, what inspires a person to say, you know what, I'm just going to jump on a coal ship. See you later, you know? Well, that was, um, I think it was a combination, you know, I mean, so, you know, da dad's an artist, which means, he, you know, he's, he's naturally kind of a fruit loop, you know? <laughs> 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 and so, you know, I, I, my, so the childhood was anything but normal, you know, mm -hmm. it was, it was bizarre and it was wonderful. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had a wonderful family, wonderful parents, uh, you know, and, and, um, it was also, uh, you know, it also could be a hard life. You know, we grew up poor as church mice, and mm -hmm. and uh, until Dad really started, you know, getting out there with the art, and then things got a little bit better. And and uh, um, my my mother was a, a barber, a professional barber, and uh, she was uh, uh, she was she was the go-to barber downtown Colorado Springs, um, and she just she just worked, 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 never stopped working. Um, at one point, she even cut Alexander Solzhenitsyn's hair, which was pretty cool, I thought. Wow. Among, yeah, among some other people. And, There's and, not uh, many people who can say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it's pretty amazing. Who could you say know, they've and, done it and literally say it? <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, it's uh, it just, I think also, I just felt, uh, I felt trapped for so long. You know, I felt trapped in Colorado, um, which is ironic because I look back now and I, I miss Colorado so much. You know, mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I wish I'd never left because I, I love it. You know, there's no place like home. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like Minnesota. You don't, you don't know what you have until you leave it for a while, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so <clears throat> uh, I felt trapped, and, you know, felt stuck. We, eventually we got out of there though. The, the folks wanted us to experience farm life. Mm -hmm. So... We moved out to this 40-acre farm out in the middle of nowhere in northeast Nebraska. I called it the sensory deprivation zone. Wow, from Colorado to Nebraska. <laughs> well, from Colorado Springs to Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A bit you know, of a landscape was, uh, change. Right. It was amazing, yeah. And when fewer we aircraft. Got there, I mean, it was, it was such a, I mean, it was so radically different. Um, and, uh, I mean, obviously. So we... Then we were stuck out there, you know, and it was and we were there for years, and and um, I just had I had travel fever, you know. So uh, I remember that I, I wanted to go to Europe. I, I wanted it so bad I could just taste it. You know, I used to dream about it, and so I told my my folks. I said I don't care what it takes. I got to get there. You know, I just have to see it. Mm -hmm. And I said what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the East Coast and I'm going to find. Um, something along the coast, like a like a dockyard to work on until I can secure passage on a ship. <laughs> that, that's, okay. that would never that, that would never occur to me. <laughs> it totally sounds like something out of the 1800s to me. Like you know, <laughs> grab your steamer yeah. trunk. He was reading about J.J. Hill and thought it was an instructional guide. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, it's absolutely true. That's you amazing. Know, I mean, I had, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm an avid reader, so out there on the farm, I think I had read far too many classics and no contemporary work whatsoever. Uh, okay. But I had no idea that this wasn't the 1800s and you <laughs> do that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, just uh, show up like, you know, little Lord Fauntleroy wanted to secure a passage to him <laughs> or something like that. But it worked. And, uh, <laughs> well, so what happened, yeah, what happened was... Um, uh, I told Dad that this is what I was going to do, and he could, you know, he, later on he told me he could see that look in my eye, <laughs> right. like that it was really going to happen, you know. Right. And he feared for me naturally, um, and he just thought, oh boy, you know, I, this kid's about to get get his rear end handed to him on a silver platter, and this isn't going to be good. So, <laughs> you know, he just he had mercy on me. What he did was he he called uh, some shipping companies on the East Coast. Oh, and he okay. said, my son really, really wants to get to Europe on a boat. Is that even possible? And they said, no. no he could, he, and they said, you know, he could, well, he, could, he can do it two, one of two ways. One way is that he can go and he can, he can get trained and, and, and licensed or whatever to work on various vessels and, and so forth. But that takes a long time. And they, but they also said, if, he, you know, if, you, if you have a lot of money, you can actually just buy passage on various, uh, you know, 
cargo ships, etc. And they're 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 kind of touristy though. Um, you know, touristy cargo this, ships. They, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah, people, people actually do it. Yeah, you can. Okay. You can, but but it is actually an organized event. So people, uh, you know, we'll call it a, a special type of travel agency for that and everything. And, and we Who didn't knew? Have I had no idea that even existed. Yep, yep. I'm not sure I want I, to call those people right now. Yeah. It, it is pricey. It is pricey. And, and we didn't have the money for that. Um, okay. Uh, so what happened was Dad eventually called uh, a company on the East Coast, um, a shipping company. And it so happened that... Uh, it was toward the end of the day. The owner's son was walking out of the uh, offices. This is a really big company, by the way. Um, and uh, uh, he's walking out of the offices. One of the phone rings. He just decides to pick it up, which is strange, right? So he picks it up. They start talking, and they just hit it off, you know? And uh, they they just, you know, Dad was talking about what, what I was wanting to do, and and um, he used some key words that this that the owner's son really kind of caught on to. And I think the, the biggest was, oh, you live in hunting country, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I got gotcha. yeah, you. Yeah, know, that makes you sense. You live on a 40-acre farm. You live with all these farms around you and the, you know, and, you know mm-hmm. oak forests and all that. And so he, uh, you know, he really wanted to come out and hunt. And, um, but... The greatest part was when he said, you know, uh, not too long back, I offered my nephew um, passage on a coal ship bound for Spain. And he turned it down. He didn't want it for whatever reason. And he right. said, if your son would like that, then what he needs to do is he needs to buy insurance from Lloyd's of London, which was, it was, it was like 100 bucks. It wasn't anything. Uh, and then he just needs to have a passport, and he can come on out here, and we'll put him on a coal ship bound for Spain. <laughs> that's insane. Well, all right, <laughs> that's so crazy. That's, that's exactly what I did. I took a Greyhound bus all the way out to uh, uh, Norfolk, Virginia, and um, uh, it was uh, a, a total of, of just over one month at sea, um, going and coming. And I spent wow. uh, uh, a little bit more time. I got off in Spain and, and toured around uh, all of Western Europe and England and Scotland, and had a lot of adventures, and, and uh, uh, it was it was fantastic. And so that was the first experience with traveling abroad. Well, and all that's of incredible. us suckers are buying airplane tickets. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's true. I mean, um, I, I think though that the breadth of a person's life experience has a huge impact on the art they create, whether you believe it or not. Right? It's, it's, it's about more than just the ability to create the art. It's, it's about the perspective, I think, that you get by doing that. And I think that when I look at your work, I, I think that that comes through. It, it comes through. Uh, you see, I, I think what you see is, I don't know, I a would call of- it sort of a, a level of sophistication or, or soul that is maybe beyond your years and perhaps that is directly related to the fact that you were willing to put yourself out there and travel around and experience things when other people were probably still thinking about you know what college they were going to go to how they were going to get in yep. you know all that kind of yeah. stuff it's a it's a different experience entirely i guess um i'd like to yes. uh take a right turn then into your experience with games um I, I know that there are several different facets of this. One of the things that we, we know for sure is that Caleb is very enthusiastic about games to the point where he's creating his own and he's preparing to do a Kickstarter. But in order to get to that point, you, you obviously had to be a great lover of games, and that bears itself out by looking at your YouTube channel. I've never right. seen, I have never, and I have never seen a YouTube channel with a bigger library. Of, of games than what I see on yours. Um, and it, it's, it's very impressive. I guess it would be, I would be interested to know, uh, you know, if, if you had to name a few that you think are your favorites, what, what would those be? And what is it about those games in particular that draws you in? Ooh, that's a difficult question. Um, well, um, obviously Skyrim is actually uh, one of the games on top of that list. Um, I think for me it's about uh, experiencing freedom and being able to escape. 
you know? I mean, um, escapism is such a huge part of, of, of why we game and why we have these experiences, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you couple that with, you know, um, freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, or, or, or having, having an experience that just impacts you to such an extent that you can't forget it. You know, um, right. so I mean, for me, up up there, I, I love the stealth genre personally. That's in fact, that's one of the things that drew me to Skyrim in particular. Um, that I could sneak around, and yeah, that I, you know, and it's just, I mean, among a billion other things, you know. But um, obviously, I'd have to say uh, uh, games like uh, Thief: Deadly Shadows, uh, which was the third Thief in in uh, in that franchise. Or that series, excuse me. Um, I'd have to say that, that that one really stands up there. A couple of recent ones, actually. Um, Alien Isolation and uh, the game Inside. Okay. okay. Um, Alien Isolation, not just for, for its uh, aesthetic uh, value, which is astounding. I learned that, uh, you know, they, they had built that, uh, that engine from the ground up. Um, so they... they uh, they, they even created this this um, uh, sound mechanic that goes far beyond anything that any game has ever ever done. You know, it's 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 literally a dynamic sound system, and and the game engine actually keys off of these these various sounds and proximity. Mm -hmm. and so they made the AI somehow less predictable than I think any game to date, and that's one of the things that really. Uh, really made such a, a profound impact on me there. And the other one was this recent game, uh, Inside, uh, from, the, uh, from the studio called Play Dead. And um, now it has a very, very bizarre ending. You know, it's, it, it'll make you scratch your head and, and yeah. kind of go, what <laughs> the heck is that all about? Uh -huh. You know, but uh, it, it just in terms of the, the atmosphere and the experience that you get from it, it just... Mm -hmm. It makes you want to come back to it, if for nothing else than that, than, yeah. that, than that environment. I don't know about um, you, but have, have you ever had that sensation where you will, you will recall a level or a scenario that you've played out in a game almost as if it were a place that you were at physically? Um, oh, yes. That I've had that many times where... You know, I, I think back into the past or something like that, something that's happened in the past. Oh, I remember that time I, you know, went to this place and I can picture vividly in my head what this location was that I went to. And then I realized, oh, wait, that, that, was, was, uh, that was a level in doom. I'm glad that wasn't real. Uh, Jesus, you know. Uh, we're all glad that wasn't yeah, real. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I've had that before. And we're talking about, you know, when I was playing Doom, it was the you know first <laughs> version <laughs> of Doom. Yeah, I mean, it was the first version of Doom. We're talking about pretty bad graphics. I mean, they were great at the time. That's a classic, though. That's a classic. Right? But I remember what the inside of some of those mm -hmm. levels looked like, and I, I could draw a map. You know? It's crazy. Yeah. But the photorealism <laughs> of the new ones, you really can get lost in there. Oh, as yeah. If you easy. were there. Oh, yeah. Certainly. Certainly. All right. And, mem and memorable for exactly the same reason. Uh -huh. Well, it, and it's the same thing with, like, um, well, okay, with Skyrim. And, okay, for instance... I can never forget the first time that I that I got to go into it, you know, that I got to play the game. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking there's no way my my machine's going to run this, you know, at the time. Right. Uh, but it did because it, <laughs> you know it's, it's it was you know they optimized it so it's perfect. You know, I got into it and I mean the way that the the, the breeze flows through the the pine trees. We've got you know I mean the right uh, the, the the rivers and and the mist that comes up from them. You know, we've yeah. got. I mean, when you're there, you're in the place that you've always wanted to be, you know? And, mm -hmm. it, it, and, and in one moment, it's like a, a place you've been before and yet a place that you've never been but have always wanted to be in, mm -hmm. you know? Strangely familiar. In terms, in terms of sheer fun, right? Like, uh, I don't know, you might say it's kind of like, um, I don't know, popcorn or something like that. You can't just have one kernel, right? <laughs> there, there are a few games like that, um, you know? Uh, for instance, um, uh, Just Cause 2, right? So okay. some people might disagree with me here, but uh, the, the, just the freedom that a game like that allows, right? You can go anywhere, you can do anything. Um, and there, there are a lot of games like that. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, 
freedom that you might see in something like sniper elite four which is the new one that's out the italian campaign and you know just just the it allows you to really dig in and take your time and enjoy the experience you know so there are a lot of things a lot of things and of course you know you can go as far back as mario you know and you can say well what what was it about that 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 made it so great well it was it's just pure addictive fun yeah it was it was it was just hard enough to be frustratingly brutal and yeah. you know and, you know and make you cry but at the yeah. same time uh, something about it made it impossible not to keep coming back to it. Right. You know? Yeah, there, were, there was always that inspiration to try again. I can, you know, I find that too. Like, it, depending on what the reason is for playing the game, uh, more recently, uh, I've been doing a series on my channel that is focused on trying to create the most sort of elegant or interesting assassinations that I can create inside of right. Skyrim. Yeah. And that, yeah. that, that <laughs> episode, uh, that, that series is called Shadling for Hire. And I will tell you, I am not even kidding. There are some, there are some levels or areas that viewers have requested that I tackle where I've gone through and I have done the same segment of a particular location, fifty or sixty times, oh, at yeah. least before before I was satisfied that what I had come up with was the most interesting solution to the problem, and I had oh, yeah. absolutely no problem like doing it again and again and again. And I'm like, oh my god, it's two o'clock, just one more time. Oh, it's <laughs> exactly. three o'clock, you know. Um, Same here. Yeah, Same it's here. A, it's replayability. Um, when when something has that kind of a hook, you know that it's it's a worthwhile game. There's something just magnetic about whatever yeah. it is you're doing that you'll want to do it over and over again. And time so, melts away absolutely. until you have to get up and go to work. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, there's always <laughs> or that. Or at least change. <laughs> yeah. Or change. That's true. Ch change your clothes and get a yeah. sandwich and then jump back in for <laughs> round 100 or whatever. <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I totally agree. Um, different games for different reasons. Um, you know, I, I think what's, what's interesting to me is to understand a little bit more about the games that you find intriguing because I'm interested in understanding a little bit more, I, I think we all are, um, in how that sort of informed your work and your decisions on... If I'm going to make a game, this is the type of game I want to make. Um, mm. Because there's, there's this idea, right, that you know, everybody is inspired by something. You know, most game developers, they can rattle off you know, five or six games that yeah. were really inspirational yeah. to them. But at the same time, they all want to create their own game and make their own mark, which means doing Absolutely. something that's different than what everybody else does as well. Um, so... I would say, you know, tell us a little bit more about your project, kind of where you're at with it, and sort of what inspired you to jump in, and and the mark you're looking to make with that project. Okay, yeah, definitely. Well, now what what precipitated the whole thing was um, it was kind of it was it was kind of frustration, last straw type of thing. It was um, it was interesting. I had been. So I've been doing freelance for, for lots and lots of years, um, uh, well over a decade. And uh, just all kinds of things, TV commercials and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, um, and when you say TV time, commercials, you're doing like video production work? Is that what you're I've doing? I've done, oh yeah, all of that. As a matter of a fact, uh, I've, I've literally played every single role in the uh, production pipeline. Um, wow, nice. Uh, and, and of course, my, my primary focus is in the, uh, in the special effects and animation. So okay. typically okay. what would happen, let's say if I was doing a product video for, uh, you know, for, some, for some company, I would take the engineer's files, I would clean those up, and then we'd start to integrate those things into, um, you know, special effects shots or maybe beauty shots and stuff like that. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, keep, typically it was my job to keep the department going down the right, you know, path in terms of technical, you know, specifications and, um, and stuff like that. Um, so and and so as a result, I've had to wear every hat, you know, when it, it, whether it's the guy behind the camera setting stuff up, you know, or getting 
getting the green screen lit correctly or checking sound levels and, and so forth and so on, all, all the way down to delivering the final asset. And, um, you know, so uh, it, it's, and those other things aren't particularly things that I, I want to be involved in, but the things that I've just had to, to be involved in and, and had to kind of help people along with along the way. Uh, and, and then that's even including training for how to use um, high-speed cameras. Um, wow. Uh, in, per in particular, the, uh, the Phantom, the Phantom uh, uh, V-series high-speed cameras, uh, you know, getting shots like that set up. And um, there's just been a lot of stuff. My, I've always wanted, of course, you know, to focus on just what it is that I specialize in. Mm -hmm. You know, but but um, when you're a freelancer, right, you got to be you got to be employable. Flexible. So the, the more that you can do, I suppose, the more opportunities you have. Right. right. Oh, yeah, that definitely. Absolutely. And these are just things that that, you know, you have to do along the way. You know, it's uh, although the industry has become so fragmented in, in you know, specialist areas um, and and gen and generalists are, are rarer and rarer. You know, uh, if you're working for smaller companies or you're working uh, for smaller groups or anything like you're gonna have to wear every hat you know so um, there's that but but uh, what had happened was is that I was doing um, doing some freelance I was doing some special effects shots for this uh, this indie horror movie <laughs> Wow and <laughs> the, uh, the the um, uh, the visual uh, effects director um, just didn't know what he was doing, and uh, the every scene was, and the, the the project had been recorded in 4K, right? So, wow. Well, ex excellent in terms of you know information to work with, but it didn't matter because the guy didn't know how to set up a shot in preparation for visual effects, and so it was all but impossible. It, what had happened was is that the director came to me and he said, "Nobody can do this, but I've I've heard good things about you, so." You know, do you think you might be able to do it? I very hesitantly took took the job on. Very hesitantly took it on because there were a bunch of little little things that kind of you know just really um, put the red flag up for me. You know, it, but not in terms of the project. It'd be fun to sink your teeth into something difficult, but just on a personal level with these people, I had dealt with people similar in the past, and so I was a little bit skeptical. Right. Right. All right. Um, I, and of course, I sought advice. You know, I just I like doing that. I like to seek advice, and and uh, everybody said no, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> you know, but I needed the money. You know, and that's that's always the case. You need right. the money, and so you do these things, and yeah. then afterwards you kick yourself and you say, why did I do that? Oh, because I needed the money. But yeah. <laughs> uh, sure enough, what had happened was we got to the end of that thing, and and I got burnt. Oh man! Um, oh, no. Yeah, I, 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 I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And yet, I still went into it. However, I just, I had this epiphany. It just hit me all of a sudden, just out of the clear blue. I realized that everything had led up to the development of games. I mean, in terms of, of, of you know, what I want to do aesthetically and, and story-wise, and, and just, I mean, th this is the place to be. You know, and the, the. You know, I, I thought that, say, oh, five years ago, maybe, um, would have been the height of the gold rush kind of area in, in, in games. But, but that wasn't true, you know, because it, it keeps climbing and it, and it keeps becoming something, right. something new, something better. Um, it keeps on reaching, you know, more people. You know, its demographics keep on broadening. So, uh, you know, now making a game, on the other hand, you know, you, you'll hear you'll hear so many people say, "I'm going to make a game," and they don't follow through with it, and it's easy to see why because it's not easy. You know, it's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, e even going the cheapest route that you can find, it's still not easy. Right. You know. Well, I suppose um, you find yourself in a unique position, right? Because if you're if the idea is that you're going to develop your own game independently, that sort of forces you into a situation where you have to be the jack of all trades. And if you've got this varied experience from being a freelancer and all these other things that you've done, that puts you in a position where it is conceivably possible for you to fill all the roles you need to in order to produce something to start with. You know, a absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's and that's that's yeah. 
you said it perfect. I mean, that's what it was that I was leading up to that, yeah. uh, or no, not leading up to, but trying to say that, that um, everything had led up to, you know, being able to do this or, or at least wanting to give it a shot, you know? Um, it's, the, it's the perfect medium. It's, yeah. That's just amazing. And it's, and it's something that I love. I have to say, I love it even more than I love, um, you know, cinema. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, cinema is uh, it's a purely subjective experience. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not a transformative experience. It's just you're just going to sit there and you're along for the ride and then that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you pay for your ticket and you go, go on the ride and then it's over. You know, but, you know, you have a, a transformative experience in games and then you actually get to be in your favorite movie, you know? Yep. And um, so so getting to, uh, you know, have an opportunity to to develop something is um, I think it's just I think it's remarkable. I I I love it. I I just hope that I do it right. You know, that's and, and even if I get shot down, I'm going to keep on getting up and going for it because I think it's I think it's important. You know, I think it's it's I mean, it's it, it, it's it's a huge desire, you know. Mm -hmm. And how is it going, Caleb? Uh, it's it's going great. Actually, um, it's uh, whew, it's quite a journey. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I find myself working, uh, you know, um, my goodness, usually when I'm really, really, really into it, you know, it's, it's not going to be any less than 12 hours. It's going to be, you know, 15 hours. Oh yeah, I could see that. Uh, crawling into bed, you know, and, and getting six hours sleep and then getting up and, um, you know, going back at it. It's it just, and the, and the learning, you, you never, ever stop. And fortunately, uh, there's so much information on the web, you know, whether it's YouTube uh, whether it's in the forums, and fortunately, um, specifically with uh, Unreal Engine 4, um, people are usually pretty quick to get back with you. And also, I've noticed that the community in, in you know, on YouTube as well, that typically um, uh, people are pretty quick to get back with, with you know, technical answers, you know, mm -hmm. so because everybody's really, everybody wants to know, you know, everybody wants right. to know what the answer to that problem is. And, uh, you know, so... Uh, it's going well. Um, uh, we're, you know, currently. Um, uh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty uh, surprised. I have a little bit of support. Um, I've got a uh, a concept artist, California. This guy is just par none. I mean, he is just. He's incredible. You got to check out his work. His name is Caleb Havertape. Uh, spelled the same as mine, C-A-L-E-B. I've known him for, for years, actually. He and I met in a, in a concept art forum uh, years ago. And so he has pitched in. He's doing some beautiful concepts for, for the game. Um, and very recently, though, I, I, I can't say 100% on this, but um, there's a, another uh, uh, developer. This guy is a mechanics de developer, so he... What he does is he makes um, movement mechanics, and he and he sells that, uh, sells those mechanics on the uh, UE4 uh, marketplace. Okay. And uh, so this, recently, is this another Caleb by chance? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> what? The third Caleb. Okay. Uh, that's what I was. That's what I was going to get to. Yeah. This, he, uh, he and I were talking back and forth, and he was wanting to know more about the project because he was thinking about pitching in, and he said, "Oh, by the way, my name's Caleb." No. <laughs> yeah, and so I just I'm going. Hmm. So you're talking to us? Why? None of us are named Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, can we be honorary I, I Caleb's? Honorary, honorary Caleb's. Caleb's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what what's yeah. next with the game, Caleb? Yeah. Yeah, and I guess yeah. What can you tell us about it? Are there anything you can tell us about the concept? Some of the ideas? Anything you can share at this point? Yeah. So. Um, what I can share, uh, and, I'm, and I'm still working out, you know, what I can and can, and or how to how to talk about it. Um, I haven't quite reached that stage yet. But I, I know the elevator that, pitch is I, the hardest part, man. Coming up with the elevator <laughs> yeah, pitch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It is, and especially for because I, I don't want to give away the shop. You know, I uh -huh. I want to keep a right. bunch of stuff secret, but at the same time, I um, I, I know that I can mention that uh, it is. Uh, it's a 3D game, right? So it's, in other words, not like 2D platformer, uh, mm -hmm. or even or 2.5D. It's it, it's uh, it's either first or third person or a combination of the two. 
um, and it's episodic. Okay, so the first um, episode uh, um, introduces players to, to the uh, basic, basically to the story, to the to the concept of it. Hopefully, um, I'm hoping that that the uh, the premise generates enough interest that people actually want to come back for episode two. If not, I mean, you know, I'll I'll make it good enough for an indie, you know, standalone game. So if people don't don't like the idea, then we don't go on to develop episode two. But um, I really am hoping that people do that because what I've tried to do is look ahead into the future with this uh, story idea, with this premise, mm-hmm. and make it something that you can expand on and um, something that you can, uh, you know, really, really sink your teeth into and and um, and have fun with. Um, so so that's and it's. As, as to the genre, I'd say that it's, um, it's a combination. Uh, there are some horror elements. Um, uh, I would say sci-fi horror, though. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not, not like psychological horror or anything like that. Um, so this is sci-fi, but it's also stealth. Um, of course, you know, going... that's your favorite, right? Yep. Stealth? Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Influenced by... Sweet by a lot of the things that have really impacted me. Also, um, it relies a lot on mechanics. So there, there are a few mechanics in this game that um, I think people are really going to have fun with. That, I mean, that's the kind of the key. I don't have a AAA budget, so there are a lot of things that although I'd love to do, I, I just can't at this point. Right, right. You know, so, so yeah, so basically a lot of the focus is going to be put on, you know, just having fun with your, with your playtime with it. So you're, um, you're planning a Kickstarter, I know that. Is, is that's right. Is the idea of the Kickstarter to help fund the first episode that would come out after the game releases or to fund the, the creation of the game you're working on right now? Well, so this is, this is episode one. Okay. And, and the, uh, the Kickstarter would be to fund uh, the completion of episode one. Okay. Uh, yep, what I did was um, uh, basically uh, saved up enough to be able to um, just work on this 24 hours, around the clock, you know, just, just, just focus on this game. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately, being a freelancer, that's something that I have a little bit more of an opportunity to do. Uh, but I did actually have uh, another job, uh, another part-time job, um, that I let go of just so that I could focus on this. Okay. And so it was a little bit of a gamble, but not too much because I did, you know, I saved up a little, a little bit so that we can actually go through this and pay some bills while we're doing this. Mm-hmm. And um, then what's going to happen is there's going to be um, a chunk of it completed, enough at least for people to see what's going on, you know, to, for some, some really nice, um, you know, uh, you know, um, previews mm-hmm. or a demo. Okay. So then, uh, hopefully funding is, you know, funding is successful. We, we go through with, uh, um, completing the rest of this first episode. Cool. Okay. Now, if I understand right, you're pretty much creating all the, your own assets for this. You're, you're not going out anywhere or anything like that. Um, that's right. Yeah. Now, what What's the reason for it? It seems like it, it would be so much easier to go out and grab, you know, kind of pre-made asset packages or whatever. Is it just because you wanted that level of control or kind of a way to learn how to do these or, or kind of what's both? the reasoning? Ab- absolutely. Well, it's it, it like you say that, I mean, there are multiple reasons for it. Um, Number one, uh, being able to um, control, uh, e- you know, exactly what sure. what goes into the game, um, and also as a learning experience, okay. you know, uh, to be able to take this knowledge um, and then carry it into the future, I think is is invaluable. You know, so um, that's what I'm trying to do. Cool. You know, to tr- really craft something unique. You know, right. that, that so that people aren't going to be right. able to go into the game and say. Hey, look at that rock right there. I've seen that before, right, you know, right, right. Yeah. Or, and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the other thing that you've got going for you here, too, is that you've actually been involved in the game industry already, uh, not in development of your own game, but working on other people's games. 
uh, in some capacity or another, which I, I imagine would give you some insight into the industry as well as some uh, opportunities to network with people, things that might help you when the Kickstarter begins. Uh, oh, yes. Tell us a little bit about some of the other projects that you've worked on and kind of what your role was on those those video game projects specifically. I know you've had some released recently on Steam. Well, uh, okay, well, that, that's kind of exciting. Um, so the uh, some time ago, uh, um, I was I was asked to to do some voiceovers for uh, for another game um, for a studio called Whale Knot. How did they discover what? you, by the way? How did they just say, "Hey, Caleb's got a great voice"? Where did they hear you? <laughs> Let's find a <laughs> Caleb. Let's yeah. find <laughs> another one. Did they go to your YouTube <laughs> channel and watch a Let's Play, or what happened? <laughs> that that's it. That's it. Are you actually. shitting they, me? I, no, that's, they. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they uh, what, well they had um, they had seen a couple of my videos okay. and um, so and then yeah they asked me if I if I wanted to do that and it went from uh, doing the the voiceover uh, to doing uh, in game character and then another voiceover and uh, they they want to use me for yeah. some future projects as well. Cool. Um, and that yeah that just really just that that was so so wonderful and they're the nicest people and they were the nicest folks on the planet and it was just it was a blast and then uh of course later on Zadbox entertainment uh approached me also having seen the channel okay, and they were gonna hire this this other well-known this really well-known voice actor you're supposed to say uh, entertainment <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> You know, just just recently, I, I had a comment. Somebody saying, "Why don't Why aren't you saying?" I, I read that actually. I, I remember. Did you really? I did. <laughs> <laughs> they missed you saying entertainment after all of the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I got to start doing that again. Hilarious. I noticed um, it when it was gone. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yeah, of course. Entertainment. As like, I always like waiting for that. Like, when's it coming? Is it Is it happening? Is this happening? <laughs> Subliminal. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a sticky note right next to my <laughs> So In Zadbox, what what game was it you were working on for them? Uh, so that was that was Quern Undying okay. Thoughts. Okay. And uh, I played uh, Professor Maythorn. And I don't know why they didn't go with the well known voice actor because I'm not well known. I'm not you know, I'm just this guy. And uh, <laughs> just so they, another Caleb in the crowd. I'm just another Caleb in the crowd, right? One of three. One of three Caleb's One of in the three. crowd. There's so many of us out there, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and they, uh, yeah, but they did. They, they um, so they asked me to do, I don't know why they didn't choose him. They, they went for me. And then, of course, they, they went with Sharon Mann, uh, who voiced uh, the Siberia series, um, along with uh, Indigo Prophecy and a bunch of other games, some Dragon Ball Z stuff. And she's, she's really well known. Nice. And so that was really exciting, and it was, it was a blast. It was also a really big learning experience. You know, it was the first time that um, I that I realized how voice acting can actually be work, like work, work. You know? Oh, okay. oh yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, it can. I, I didn't know that. I just thought, hey, what a blast! All you have to do is talk, <laughs> suckers. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> but but then it was like, no, we got to do that take again. Got to do it again, 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 again. And it was and it was like, oh wow, you know. And then you actually have to act. You've got to, you know, dig down and you've got to dredge the emotions up and everything. And yeah. it's like, wow, my gosh, it's there's a, a lot, lot of work, work here, you know. So I have I have a lot of respect for what you do. Well, I got um, a I yeah. Just, I started playing that a little bit. Um, uh, before I realized that my game hardware was not quite up to it, but uh, it was fantastic. Yeah, you did a great job with it. it yeah, was, it was oh. a lot of fun. Yeah, it's very cool. It's cool to oh. like watch somebody's YouTube channel and then go and play a game and and hear their voice, voice. in games. Like, oh yeah, that's Caleb. I recognize that. I, re I recognize those pipes. <laughs> it's kind of hard to suspend it's your disbelief yeah. when it's Caleb. Yeah, right. Even though he's not speaking with a Russian accent, I still I still. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the oh. things I notice is that what I like about your channel is, you know, there's that kind of tongue-in-cheek humor about things. And if it's made by a Russian developer, you're using a Russian accent when you go through the game or an English <laughs> accent. Like this, uh, you were doing a text adventure once that was so, uh, it would have been 
good on its own, but the fact that you were speaking in this sort of pompous English accent, <laughs> you know, as you were reading all the books and stuff, was really amazing. Oh, right. So you've got, oh, my goodness, you've got yes. some talent there, I would say. So. I think that was the uh, the 39 steps. I, yes, um, that's what You know what? I actually have, because I, I also have this um, horrible habit of, of not finishing what I start, uh-huh. and uh, but I actually have all of them recorded. I just haven't uploaded them. Really? Yeah, I just haven't gotten to it, because I've got to go through and I've got to edit them, and I'm kind of oh, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll get to them someday, yeah. I guess. <laughs> so Editing's work? Yeah, you've got all the voice work and, and all the video recorded just sitting there in raw files somewhere. I just yeah, I've got it all sitting there, and I've got to just get to it. <laughs> Somehow I get, I I don't uh, get the impression you're going to get to it anytime soon. No, <laughs> no, might, no. Might be I one am. Two things I swear I am. I swear. <laughs> we're not we're not talking about geological time here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his uh, his hard drive's a time capsule. Yes, in the next era, we'll do it. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Oh, well, this is really cool. I mean, uh, we're unfortunately running to the end of our time. I feel like we could we could do this uh, much longer. But uh, what I, I guess what I'd like to do is sort of finish out by, you know, kind of getting an impression of when you're hoping to get the game out and yeah. mm-hmm. uh, when when kind of what your your goals are in terms of, of getting the Kickstarter going and then yep. uh, give listeners a, an idea of where they can keep track of you and your work and your progress and so when the time comes to contribute they are ready to go yes absolutely um, well so uh, okay uh, as far as a timeline goes I keep giving myself uh, some pretty strict you know deadlines but uh-huh. that's it's you know wow fluid <laughs> that's just something that keeps on getting pushed and pushed and pushed um you know i've, I've not, of course i haven't you know even touched uh giving an official uh you know deadline because i know that that you know that'd probably be bad to do but um i'm hoping i'm just hoping soon within the within the coming few months you know, that's that's something that is important to get that up quickly. I, I don't have, you know, a year to uh, to work on this this first portion for the Kickstarter. I've got uh, I've got a few months, you know, so it's safe to say within a few months that that should get going. Yeah. Um, hopefully less, you know, hopefully a couple of months. But at the, at the rate yeah. that time flies also currently I am doing freelance for um, uh, uh, a couple of TV commercials. Um, that was the I think I mentioned it uh, to you, Stu. That was the uh, the Walmart slash uh, Cabela's ads. Okay. And um, so that takes up a bit of time right there. Um, but uh, hopefully soon, okay. um, within the within a, the coming you know few months. Excellent. Uh, and people can people can keep up with it uh, a number of places. Number one, my website. Um, that's just uh, CalebMerrick.com. Um, and uh, I, I make occasional announcements on my channel, the YouTube channel, Artist Caleb. Uh, and I do actually have a, a development blog um, uh, for the game, uh, specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, and people can see that. It, uh, it's, it's just uh, Artist Caleb's Game Dev at uh, Blogspot. I think it is dot com. I'll look up the the, uh, the actual site here. Yeah, and we'll we'll have all of this uh, in the podcast show notes as well as oh, okay. in the description. Okay, great. We'll have it in the description on the YouTube version that we put right. out yep. here on the channel as well. Okay. Yeah. Great. I I wondered too if I if because this is for uh, I mean I, I I'm supposing that um, some uh, other indie developers might chance upon this material or or, or maybe find a little bit of it helpful. Um, I, I was wondering about including um, a few recommendations for what kind of tools to use. Uh, yeah, for, yeah, that was an area it would have been nice to get to. We just kind of ran out of time, but absolutely. oh, are we out of time? Okay, that's that's We're, cool. That's cool. Yeah, but you, you said you're using Unreal Four, right? You're using the Unreal Engine as as kind of the basis for this, and then uh, your production tools we didn't get to, unfortunately. But okay, we could probably slip those in the notes too, though. And maybe we have a good reason to do this. Again, Again. Yeah. maybe in yeah. a few weeks. I, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we, we take a couple of weeks and we do uh, a part do. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we, we go through some tools Redux. and some more specifics maybe. about 
how you're doing I didn't, what you're doing. I didn't drive you guys away? No uh, way, man. Just, not completely. Although I am going to go get still my, my friends. <laughs> I'm going to go Even get my name changed to Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, we realized we're never going to be insiders because of our name issues. But, you know. Well, you know. We can try to change them. Oh, the no, we can change the podcast to Caleb Crusade. <laughs> yeah. Can, ooh, ooh. It starts with C. Let's add another C. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. right. right, right? You got that. Yeah. <laughs> and then a P. Wait, no. No. How does that, that's not going to work. Uh, CCCP. Uh, okay. Not, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I With get it. stars yeah. in your eyes. <laughs> Russia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. CCCP. <laughs> what was that? CCCP. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Spasiba. Spasiba. Tavarić. Da. Harasha. Oh my gosh. Oh god, I could listen to that all day because I can't do that accent, damn it. I could only it. do accents I make up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's somewhat limiting. Um, okay, well, first of all, thank you so much for being on, Caleb. We are going to have you on again, I think. And, oh, this uh, was an honor. This was an honor. Thank so you much so fun. much for having me. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. We've been trying to get you on the show for a while, and it just turns out that this was actually a, a perfect opportunity to do it because yep. of the stuff that you're into, and I think it fits with the, the demographic people here and what they're working on and what their concerns are, too. Um, they have all the same concerns. They're thinking about Kickstarters. They're thinking about how they're going to get it all done. They're thinking about how they're going to do the design and what tools they're going to use and you know yeah. whether, whether or not their partners are going to come through for them and right. you know, oh, all yeah. those concerns that Paying game developers have. You know? Yes. So this was very timely. Um, okay, so everybody, if you want to find out more information about Caleb and his project, make sure you look in the show notes of the podcast. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure that you look down there in the description. We'll have a whole bunch of links to his work, as well as a bunch of other resources that you can check out. And we'll make some announcements coming up here in the very near future about when we're going to have Caleb on again for part two of this discussion. If you have any uh, interest in contributing to our Patreon campaign, you can go to patreon.charactercrusade.com and for any information about past shows and upcoming shows go to charactercrusade.com thank you very much everyone and we will see you next time yeah. bye bye